Buddy, I thought this week we'd have Claude as our story, because I've really enjoyed doing it in school this week. Claude and the city. This is Claude. Say hello, Claude. Hi, Claude. Claude is a dog. Small Claude is a small dog. Claude is a small plump dog. Claude is a small plump dog who wears a beret and a lovely red jumper. He lives in a house with Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes. Claude also lives with his best friend, Sir Bobbly Sock. Sir Bobbly Sock is both a sock and quite bobbly. He's grubby and he smells a bit like cheese. Every morning after breakfast, Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes put on their shiny shoes and their warm coats. Claude watches from his bed. He watches them with one beady eye open and one beady eye closed like this. Or sometimes like this. Be a good boy, Claude, said Mr Shiny Shoes. We'll be back soon, says Mrs Shiny Shoes. And off they go to work. As soon as the door has closed behind them, Claude opens both beady eyes. He takes his beret out from underneath his pillow and pops it on his head. Then he decides what adventure he's going to have. One morning, Claude put on his beret and decided to go to the city. I think I'll go to the city, he said. So Bobby Sock came too, as he didn't really have anything planned that day. Claude had never been to the city before. He couldn't believe how tall the buildings were. They stretched right up into the air and some of them disappeared into the clouds. Sir Bobbly Sock was glad that he wasn't the one who had to wash all the windows. The city was big, bright and very, very busy. There was so much to do. First, Claude and Sir Bobbly Sock went for a walk. They walked down one long street and up another. Everyone seemed very friendly. Cars peeped their horns and some drivers shouted out to them. But it was too noisy for Claude to hear what they were saying. Sir Bobbly Sock was slightly deaf in one ear, so he didn't really help. Next, they went to look at the pigeons. There were lots of pigeons in the city. He looked secretly, shyly, and as if he wasn't really trying to look at them at all. Claude decided he liked the pigeons very much indeed, a bit like my poppy. By eleven o'clock, Claude was feeling a bit thirsty, so he went to a fancy cafe with Sir Bobbly Sock. Claude's drink was hot chocolate, and he drank every drop. Sir Bobbly Sock ordered a big fruity cocktail, which looked a bit more like a plant pot, can you see? Claude's drink was delicious. Sir Bobbly Sock wasn't sure where to start. Now it was time to go shopping. Claude was amazed there were so many different shops. There were shoe shops, loo shops, chip shops, chop shops, which are also known as butcher's shops. And there was even shops selling the most curious contraptions that Claude had ever seen. Then Sir Bobbly Sock found the best shop ever. Betty's Beret Boutique. Claude hurried inside and bought a beret in every colour and every pattern. That was an awful lot of berets. As they were setting off to find some lunch, Claude spotted a very interesting building. It had lots of steps, some big pillars at the front, and it was exactly the same colour as Juicy Bones. Juicy Bones happened to be Claude's favourite things, after Sir Bobby Sock and his beret. So Claude and Sir Bobby Sock went inside. A helpful person sitting behind a big desk told them the building was an art gallery. Here's a guide, she said helpfully and handed Claude a guidebook. It tells you what's in each room. Claude said, thank you, left his boxes with her and set off with Sir Bobbly Sock. He really liked looking at things and wanted to start straight away. The first room was full of sculptures. Claude discovered sculptures were bits of art that you weren't in frames and you could walk around, but you could absolutely not touch at all. Some were enormous, some were ditchy, and some were very rude indeed. 
Claude looked at his guidebook. It said, go into the next room. So he did. On the walls were lots of pictures and swirly frames. Claude and Sir Bobbly Sock sat down on a handy bench and looked at them. Some showed people standing around and pointing at things that weren't there. Claude thought that was a bit silly. Some paintings had dogs in them, which made Claude rather happy. But none were wearing a beret. Let's go and have some lunch, said Claude. I could just eat a juicy bone baguette. He collected his boxes of berets and they set off to find a cafe. Suddenly, a naughty robber in a striped jumper and a mask came running past, carrying a sculpture. Two guards were running after her. Claude's paws were so full of boxes and his brain so full of juicy bone baguette that he didn't see her. The robber did not see Claude and all his boxes. <gasps> Bump, crash, wallop! Berets exploded everywhere, the rubber fell to the ground, the sculpture went flying through the air, everyone gasped. <gasps> Sir Bobbly Sock felt sick with worry, but Claude saved the day. Soon the mayor arrived. Claude, you are a hero, he cried. He gave Claude a medal and whisked him and Sir Bobbly Sock off for a slap-up dinner. Back in the kitchen of Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes' house, Claude and Sir Bobbly Sock snuggled down in their beds. Claude closed his beady eyes. A little later on, Mr and Mrs Shiny Shoes came home from work. Where on earth does this medal come from? asked Mrs Shiny Shoes. Do you know anything about it, Claude? Oh, look, he's fast asleep, said Mr Shiny Shoes. We'll have to find out in the morning. And I'll read part two another time. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon, everybody. Bye.